is Jamie, and I'm honored to get to share a little bit of my story with you guys. Um, I'm 28 years old, and my life has been up and down. I want to say first and foremost that I don't regret anything that has happened to me or that I've done simply because of where it went. And so I just want to take you just on a little journey through my life and um, and just share with you the hope that I have found and where I found that. So my parents divorced when I was younger due to abuse and alcoholism and and, um, and various things. Um, and so ultimately I'm grateful for that decision that my mother made because it was to protect me. And so there's there's been a lot of healing there I found in the Lord. But I grew up, you know, with a lot of pain in that because I was fatherless. And even though I wasn't raised in a Christian home, I had this knowledge that God was my father. Um, and that was always in the back of my mind. And so I was probably about 11 when I first was introduced to Jesus as my personal savior, as a, a relationship with him. And that actually came through a friend of mine at school. Um, long story short, basically I gave my life to the Lord at church camp uh, one summer, the summer going into seventh grade. And I remember encountering God's love and I just cried and cried and cried. And I remembered that that reality that I had in the back of my mind that God was my father became, became real to me. It was something I began to experience. I began to actually uh, have that truth change my life. Um, that orphan spirit that I had been carrying with me, uh, uh, rejection and worthlessness and, and not being able to be loved, um, was began to be cracked through that shell by the Father's love when I gave my life to him as a young child. But there was still a lot of pain. There was still a lot of brokenness in there. Um, I still had a broken home. I still had a lot of turmoil at home, um, fighting and, and yelling and just division and hatred and and bitterness and rejection. And there was still a lot of that. Um, and so I began to get angry at God. I followed him for a couple of years, but those things kind of creeped back in and um, also came was depression. See, I another part of my testimony was that I believed a lie for many years. I was told a lie and I believed it that depression ran in my family, anxiety ran in my family, alcoholism ran in my family, and so that I was predestined for those things. And I believed that lie, I took a hold of that lie. And so um, about the age of 12, I was put on antidepressants um, and, you know, began to rely on that, to rely on something other than God for what I was experiencing. And I believe that was kind of the start of me slowly falling back into the world. And so by the time I was in high school, um, I turned to drugs, alcohol, men. Uh, I was very angry. I, so ultimately, I was down this path of darkness, that raw road, um, and it was bad. It, my depression got worse and worse, my anxiety got worse and worse, and so more drugs because I thought that was the answer. And that, that was not the answer. I, I went through, um, you know, suicidal thoughts. Um, I even was in some situations where I had been raped um, by two different men on two different occasions. Um, and so just more, more depression, more loneliness, more worthlessness. Um, more pain, and so that I just kept going further into that, and by the time I graduated high school, 
I was very deep into this lifestyle and drugs. Drugs just were worse. The drugs got worse and I got into deeper addictions. Basically like not not just marijuana but now there was cocaine and, and meth and, and this and that. But ultimately uh, what I discovered later on was that I was just trying to numb that feeling. I was trying to fill that hole. I was trying to just escape from what I was feeling and experiencing. And so once I got to, I guess you could say, rock bottom, it was when I entered into a relationship uh, with a man who was, who was quite a bit older than me. Um, and again, that discovered later on that kind of stemmed from that fatherlessness in my life. Um, and he was did not treat me well, but I didn't think I deserved any better, so I didn't fight against that, or I didn't uh, think I needed to escape that. I, I think I, I really believed I deserved to be treated that way, because um, I didn't know my worth. I didn't know my identity. And so that relationship was three years of my life, and it was um, more addiction. It was physical abuse, it was verbal abuse, emotional abuse, and I really lost myself in, in all of that. I, I, I remember one of the biggest memories I think I have of that time um, was I would go lock myself in the closet in, where it was dark. And I would just cry. Um, and I felt so hopeless. And I felt so unlovable. I felt like I just could not be loved. And I remember another memory I had um, was one night I was clinging to this relationship. He had, he had moved out. Of, we were living together. He had moved out. But I was still clinging to that relationship. And he, and this particular night, was, like most other nights, treating me very poorly. Um, there was the physical abuse there, and so I had called a friend, actually, to come pick me up. It was like, it was like 3 in the morning, and um, I had called a friend and her husband, and, and they were going to come pick me up, but while I was on the phone with them, this person that I was with, they... They heard me, and they came in. They grabbed the phone. They threw the phone. You know, you know, physically tried to stop me from, and I guess take their anger out on me for what I was doing. And so I decided just to leave. And I was a little bit out of town uh, at this house that he was staying at. And so I decided to leave. It was around three in the morning. I was like, I'm just gonna walk home. And I remember I, I grabbed, you know, some something to get high on, and I just walked out, I just took off down the road, and I think that was probably one of my lowest points, because I remember thinking, what am I doing out here, and it's three in the morning, walking along the highway, basically, I mean, what am I doing, what am I doing, where is my life going, um, basically, um, I had got some uh, pre-cancer, I just gone through some medical issues, and I started to hear the Father's voice again, though. I started to hear him say that I was created for more than this, and I remember having this overwhelming feeling that I was created for more than this, that this was not the life that I was created to live, and that God was still with me, even though I had left and turned from him. I started to feel that he was still with me and that he was calling me back. And one of the ways that he did that um, was allowing me to feel my brokenness, um, to, sh to show me that this is not the life I created you to live, and allowing me to feel conviction over my sin again because uh, I had become really numb to the sin that I was living in. And 
once I start to feel that conviction again, the thing that I was doing that once felt good, they started to begin to feel empty. And they didn't feel good anymore the way they used to. And so I remember that, that was about a year and, uh, of that. So here we are, to that moment where um, I surrender my life back to the Lord. And I, I remember so distinctly uh, feeling like a huge weight had been lifted off of me. The weight of um, my sin, the weight of oppression, basically the weight of that dark darkness that had been weighing me down had been so heavy. I had been carrying around like just like chains, like chains. And the moment those chains were broken off of me, I remember feeling so free. And it was God's grace, and it was God's love, it was God's forgiveness, it was His peace, His joy, His very presence that flooded back into my very being, into my life, when I invited Him in again. And I remember that um, all of a sudden, I didn't have depression anymore, I didn't have anxiety anymore. I didn't have that that weight of depression and anxiety. It was gone. Uh, and the medications at that point in my life, I'd been on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicine for almost 10 years. And I threw them in the garbage. Boom. Gone. I didn't need them anymore because I realized that the issue, what I was really struggling with all those years, it was a spiritual issue. It was an issue of, of needing to know my identity. It was an issue of of needing to allow God to fill those places in my heart. And so when his peace came, when his joy came, when forgiveness, when grace came, he set me free. His perfect love set me free from fear. His perfect love, his power, his love set me free from fear. And so I just I thank you for listening. And, um, and I hope that you just know that you're not alone wherever you're at with the Lord. Or with, without the Lord, turn around. He's, he's right there. He's never, he's never far away.